Berserk Volume 14 continues the story from where we left off in Volume 13, obviously. And we get to see that Casca um, is pregnant. And I kind of predicted this earlier when I seen her held her stomach after her and Guts, uh, you know, had sexual relations. But her being pregnant has a huge twist in this volume. And in the very first chapter of this volume, we see that she's pregnant with Guts' child. However, the, the uh, child has been possessed by evil due to Griffith or Femto, Femto raping Casca. And we actually see her, you know, trying to protect this demon-possessed baby, which makes sense because it's her child, you know, it's her child, it's her baby. And Guts wants to kill it. And the Skeleton Knight dude explains exactly how it got possessed, and, the, you know, because, you know, Femto raped her, etc., etc. And it disappears into a world closer to the world of the dead when the light shines on it. But it will come back to Casca and Guts, just like any child usually would. Even demon children, the Skeleton Knight said, uh, will come back to their parents. So, I'm interested to see what role this demon baby will play in the future chapters of the manga series. I mean, really... Maybe it will be raised and somewhat gain human emotions and be an asset to Guts war against the evil spirits, against the Apostle. I think that'd be pretty cool. I wouldn't want the baby to become an enemy of Guts. I'd rather it be on Guts' side. You know, that's what I would like to see. Um, still, Casca doesn't want anything to do with Guts. However, she's not running away from him like she did the first time they seen each other after the whole eclipse. So that's nice to see that she's not really... She's starting to get more comfortable with him. But there's a scene where they're eating the food and he goes to kiss her and she kind of freaks out and she tries to get away. So she still doesn't fully trust him. And it's also... It feels like she's broken. Like, she's not even acting like an adult. She's acting like a child. Like how a child would act when it's scared. It's honestly pretty sad. So it's crazy and it's good to see the aftermath and the consequences that occurred due to the eclipse, which is Casca's totally broken. Uh, their, their baby is possessed by evil due to Femto Griffith raping her. And Guts has to be the one that has to deal with all this, pretty much alone. Because even though Rickard's there and Godo's there and his, her daughter, his daughter's there, Gr Guts is the one that went through all this. Guts is the one that loved Casca the most. Guts had a, you know, got her pregnant and now sees that his baby is possessed by evil. He's the one dealing with all these consequences, not Rickard and not Godo and his his daughter or granddaughter, whatever she is, Elizabeth, I think her name is. So, it, it's pretty sad to see. And this obviously is going to play a huge role in Guts's development. You know, everything that happened in the Golden Age arc. Is playing a huge role, but now having his lover not remembering him and not, you know, uh, accepting him, his baby being possessed by evil, it's all going to shape him. And we actually get to see the name of his giant sword. It's called the Dragon Slayer, and Godo created it. And it was created to destroy dragons or inhuman things. And he got sick of making fancy weapons. He said, swords are just giant butcher knives. Why not make it look like that? And he almost got killed because of this by the king who ordered to make a dragon slaying sword. So he ran off to the mountains where he lives. And we find out that these mountains have a strong elf background. Apparently elves lived there before. So it's strong with the earth. And when they're inside the ore caves, the uh, demons, the, 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 the living, you know, the dead spirits will not come after Guts and Casca while they're in there. So we see Guts locking Casca up in there. Once again, it's great to see the after effects of everything that happened. And we see Guts go off on his own, and we actually find out how he got equipped with the artificial arm and cannon. Um, Godo's daughter, or granddaughter, whatever, I believe it's his daughter, showed Ricker his, like, armory basically, and Rickert seen the, you know, prosthetic steel hand and a cannon, and he put two and two together and said this would be good for Guts, and we see Rickert equipping Guts with it, and he goes actually to use it, and the old man Godo shows up, but then we see basically a apostle show up to feed on Guts and Casca and calls them leftovers, and this guy showing up was basically for Guts to find the dragon, the dragon Slayer, and to try out his new prosthetic arm. That's how I felt it was, you know, the purpose of this little demon showing up. I mean, it makes sense because 
he's going there to get leftovers, and the brand of sacrifice led him there. However, it was kind of, they used it to show off Guts using the prosthetic arm, and how much Guts wants to kill these demons as well. And also finding the, finding the Dragon Slayer. And he's like, you've been holding out on me, you know, old man, etc., etc. And uh, the old man's surprised because he's like, you know, he's actually wielding this giant sword. Uh, Guts decides to leave. And Rickert says, you need to stay here. Rickert feels, you know, the band of the Hawk is dead. You need to be with Casca. And Guts, this surprised me. Guts tells him, the, the band of the Hawk is not dead. We're still here. Casca's our leader and I'm the Raiders captain. So what better purpose for me to serve to raid the enemy's camp, right? And he heads off, and he basically tells Rickert to look after him. Then we move into a new arc called the Conviction Arc. And within the Conviction Arc, we have the Lost Children, uh, I guess, mini arc in it. You know, chapters or whatever. The Lost Children chapters inside the Conviction Arc. And we see two years pass. And I'm assuming Guts hasn't been back to Godo's little, you know, mountain campsite in two years so what exactly is going on at that campsite in the last two years has their child their demon possessed child come back to Casca at all has it grown bigger what's going on there we didn't see in this volume what we get is more of Ka uh, guts now as the black swordsman and also with puck so this must be after the earlier chapters you know after femto you know goes back to wherever the fuck he goes this must be you know, after he meets Puck and everything, after the earlier chapters with the Count, etc., etc. And he's with Puck, and we actually move into a new arc, which involves something called the Misty Valley and fake elves, which are actually, they're called elf bugs, I guess. They're demons, and Guts finds this out. You know, and it's cool because we see, we've seen this apostle during the eclipse. It looks like a fairy. Okay, let's see if I can find it. It looks like a fairy, but it's actually an apostle, and she has little apostle bugs, these little elf-looking bugs that are attacking, and this village that, well, he rescues a girl named Jill, and this village he goes to is scared of elves, so they're scared of Puck, and it starts to get pieced together that, as from a reading standpoint, that this apostle is feeding on the humans using her little elf bugs that are disguised as elves to scare the humans. And now Guts is, you know, going in on these people. And at the end of it, he actually starts killing these elf bugs using his giant uh, dragon slayer as a, a um, bug swatter, using the flat side of it to kill these elves and actually light some of them on fire as well. So it's pretty crazy where we're going after the Golden Age arc. I'm a little let down on it, but I'm also pretty excited as well. I don't have that hype I had during the Golden Age arc. Um, maybe it's because I'm still reeling and I'm still feeling emotional after what happened in volume 13. But uh, I like where the story is going. I just hope it picks up somewhat soon. Um, I mean, obviously, it's just Guts going around killing the Apostles because he's raging a war on the living. I mean, on the, on the dead, actually. And he even says when he leaves two years ago, he says, I don't feel anything but dismal rage. That's the only thing keeping me on my two feet. So this dude is just embodied by rage, and we've seen that that's the truth, uh, and that's a fact, basically, uh, in the earlier chapters when we first seen him as the Black Swordsman. After he burns these elf bugs, we see somebody show up, and it's obviously the Apostle right here. There she is. We've seen her during the Eclipse, and a little bit before the Eclipse, or I believe if we didn't see her in the Eclipse, we've seen her when Rickert was bombarded by apostles and the skull the skeleton knight kinda like rescued him so that was pretty nice foreshadowing uh... earlier in the golden age arc and now we're actually seeing this character and obviously this is probably somebody guts is gonna have to destroy because he wants to so overall not a bad volume I enjoyed it just not as excited as i was during the golden age arc um, i've been told the golden age arc is the best arc in the series but it sort of goes down here when I heard other people say that this stays consistent in enjoyment, just not as good as the Golden Age arc. So I'm still looking forward to reading it. Um, I, I still love the character Guts. The dude is just being driven by dismal rage, and he wants to eliminate everybody out of revenge. 
Uh, I want to see what's going to happen with Casca's and Guts' child that's possessed by evil. Is it going to be an asset to Guts' goals, or is it going to end up being a hindrance to Guts' goals? So that's what I want to see. And I also want to see what's going to happen with this, you know, Apostle right here. Then I get something called the Berserk Prototype at the end of the book. This was pretty interesting, and I'm going to read you an excerpt at the beginning about what it says. This story is a submission piece created by Kentaro Miura during college in 1988, which became the basis for what is now Berserk. The establishment of details, worldview, and whatnot differs at points from the Berserk series being published today, but the intent is still present in this early incarnation. This story is set after the conclusion of the Band of the Hawk story arc. Band of the Hawk story arc. So this is after the Golden Age arc. And Puck's with him, and he looks sort of different than what he looks like in Berserk right now. But he still has no, he only has one eye, he only has one arm, he has the cannon and everything. And uh, it just, the only thing that really stood out to me with it is uh, they call the demon god Vana or whatever. So I want to see if that's actually going to be a demon in this series, if that's going to be uttered at all. In the actual main series, the name Vana. Um, they called the Brenna Sacrifice the Brenna Sacrifice of Vana. They called Vana the Demon God. So I want to see if that's going to play any kind of role and is going to show up in the main series because this is like the basis for Berserk. So I don't want to talk much about that, but I did enjoy the prototype and I did enjoy this volume. But like I said, I just want to see what's going to happen from here. The whole Puck comedy thing, I kind of feel is a little jarring. I understand he's supposed to be like the light comedy, but I don't feel like it's needed in this dark series right now. Uh, I kind of could do without Puck. I really enjoyed not having him in the Golden Age arc. I enjoyed the seriousness of the Golden Age arc. Um, but maybe I'll get used to Puck's lightheartedness in comedy. Uh, it's like a, a huge contrast to what's going on in the series. And a huge contrast to the main character. So um, maybe Guts and Puck will eventually start to become better friends. And Guts will start calling him by his name rather than calling him an annoyance and a bug. I guess we'll see what, how their relationship develops as well. But uh, let me know your thoughts on the volume, guys. Let me know your thoughts on my video. As always, like, favorite, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content. Thanks for watching. This is a little bit longer than usual, and I recapped a little bit more than I usually do, but I give you my thoughts as well, so I guess that's good. Just let me know your thoughts, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.